Hi YouTube, I hope you guys are doing well. We're just continuing on the train of Vivi. Apparently they really want Vivi. They really want to see what comes next. So do I. So let's just get into it. There's no way for us to like literally stop and stop and go. Let's just go. Okay, bro. Real quick, guys, go follow Aqua Ace in their main channel. Aqua, always feel free to go ahead and drop your channel where, wherever, uh, you know. They were playing Silent Hill yesterday, and they were doing such a fantastic job. They actually finished the game. Uh, but nonetheless, they're really, really phenomenal streamers. Go check them out. I was in the chat for the most of the time until I fell asleep on my chair. <laughs> so I apologize, Aqua, if you're talking to me. I think at once you put on the Sailor Moon costume uh, in Silent Hill, like right after you did the little, like, uh, you know, everything that comes with it, I was like, I knocked out. But nonetheless, hey, go show some love to Aqua and her her whole thing that's top-notch uh crew that they have going on there so a plus anyway let's continue guys antonio ophelia no jinkaku program ni jibun no data o uwagaki shita iya sonna koto wa arienai to demo kono watashi o mite mo ka you know what's scary and i hate to be fucking controversial immediately off the gate this sort of reminds me of uh this sort of reminds me of uh the uh VTuber situation, yeah? Where it's like <laughs> the main company comes in and can still be talking like the main like character or whatever. But what if the main person that was behind the character has been fired, guys? Like that's sort of what terrifies me about certain certain situations like that, you know? Where it's like, hey, you know, if you're not able to go ahead and directly hear them speak or if they're using voice modulators or whatever, couldn't you just hire so Kizuna I wait, did Kizuna I really go through something like that? And it's not just that, like, it's also like, uh, I don't know, like, because what we know so far is like, essentially, the friend went ahead and programmed uh, himself onto the singer. So he took over her body or whatever to make sure that, like, she's able to go ahead and accomplish her goals. Right. But it's not even that. It's like deep fake youth VTubers. Aqua is true. But like, uh, like multi network channels. Yeah. That's sort of what scares me about that as well is because oftentimes you can be regulated to quite literally be the shell of a person or of a channel you were before you started streaming. So just imagine the, uh, essentially someone else speaking on your behalf and telling you what you can and can't say, what you can and can't experience, what you can and can't play, uh, so on and so forth in situations like that. Like, yikes, dude. Like, did they really like you for your own content or did they like you because of the uh, people that you were bringing in uh, were a specific demographic that they wanted to go into Target? So, oof. That about them being taken over by someone else. I... I can't get into it as a viewer by so it, Aqua, that's sort of one of my big fears though. Like if I ever decided to go into the two of the VTuber route or whatever, right? And let's say that I even had a little bit of a robotic voice or a modulation or anyone can go ahead and impersonate me in any way, shape or form. You're run by a bigger company. Who's not to say that they can go ahead and get rid of the main person behind the account. Um, you know, especially if you sign with them, because like there's a lot of like, uh, big big companies out there where you quite literally sign it could even be for like vivi in this situation as well where you have to meet a certain threshold to go ahead and sign and be with them they take care of your publicity they take care of everything but at the same time they also take care of the content that you're delivering you don't meet up to that content they find someone else that can imitate you they'll throw like they can literally replace and swap without a lot of people noticing which is really really sad if you think about it because at the end of the day it's like they never really cared about the person they just cared about the idea ジョーマの手から連れ出さなくて。なぜオフィリオを二度も殺すんです。40年だ。40年間この時を待っていた。あなたは誰なの? Oh, shit. My dude, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that, brother. Kisama <laughs> 
なんでこんなどうしてビビを AI の葬儀がどのように行われるか知っているか<笑>うんあんな事故に巻き込まれるなんて参列者は AI の最後を痛みながら Did they just bury the mothership? Or the CPU, bro? 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 Like, there can literally be species right in front of you that, like, uh, go up to your shutter speed, past your shutter speed, so they can literally exist uh, in the same reality as you can, but you can't physically see them or interact with them due to them vibrating at such a frequency. So, you know, what is sentience in that way? And what is cognizance in that way? And if an artificial intelligence can achieve such, such a thing, right, uh, of, let's say, sentience or being able to, like, artificially think for themselves, um... What does that mean for for establishing rights for them, right? Does that mean that like, or or if you're talking about equal rights as humans in that regard, you know, with the with the recognition of self. But what is self in that regard? Because for every person, it's going to be different. TLC, you know, what is what is you for you, right? And this is. There are some humans that don't even have human rights yet, unfortunately. True, Aqua. Fucking true. Aqua coming in strong. <laughs> I meant as equal rights. Okay, yeah. This is a rough one, man. This, this is a really... Because at the end of the day, here's... We, we still haven't given livestock any right either. Well... Vote yes for AI rights in order to be spared on the upcoming AI artificial intelligence for vote. My, my big thing with all of this, right, is like, let's say that we go ahead and, like, give... Because artificial intelligence, is, at least when it comes to, like, future psychology, right, or, like, so, looking forward in psychology, looking forward into uh, not even transhumanism, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about, like, neuropsychology, right? It's the University of Colorado. Uh, I believe there's a couple universities in Europe. Um, I don't think it's the University of Leiden. I think it's, uh, it, I think it's University of Amsterdam. I forgot what other university as well are quite literally mapping out human consciousness inside of the brain to go ahead and transfer consciousness into artificial intelligence or being able to map it. So, yeah, like if you're able to go ahead and transfer human consciousness into, say, a computer or artificial intelligence. How many of you guys would actually be down for that? Would that you, would the you that you are still here be you? And would the you that is in like a computer or in whatever be you as well? You know? So many good questions. Uh, what's up, Sage? Yeah, feel free to ask any anytime. Yes, in, and in case they manage to transfer consciousness into an AI, I don't think that would... That is, would still be me. Why not, Blade Dragon? It is your exact replica of your consciousness at that at that point. I'm ready for the cyberpunk dystopia. As long as it's not like the cyberpunk game full of fucking glitches, I'm A-OK -okay with that. That sounds pretty wonderful, I'll be honest with you. We're watching Vivi Allen. Como estas? Hola, que estas bien? Uh, TLC, I think I consider myself a person because there's an idea that there's some action that benefits with me. Uh, with the idea of me being present, I consider that the idea of a self is something that intelligence but have no idea of what self is. They can't act on... So TLC, even with that, even though, like, let's say that you go ahead and transfer your consciousness onto uh, an a artificial intelligence. Uh, even if you transfer your consciousness, right, into something like that, would that you still be you? Would they deserve the equal rights as you? Because at that point, they're sentient. They believe that they are themselves. So suddenly they woke up one day and they continued on from that point. They still think that they are you. They still think that they are self. And they have the concept and natural thinking patterns of you. So what what is the difference in that regard? Okay, okay. So we all know that my ex is a... Yeah, but he was amazing at first. Going to manipulate you in the long run and, uh, instead of just short term. So real quick, manipulators, okay, my thing with manipulators, uh, with at least like 
first level manipulators manipulators are in, are in it for the long run is that they'll never present a downside to you right so let's say that the relationship starts off and like they're meeting all the perfect expectations and everything right number one thing is you should always have your boundaries no matter what right you should always keep your standards no matter what they are uh you, of course you can compromise you can talk to your partner communication is always fucking key no matter what you end up doing but if all of a sudden like there's absolutely like no point of contention nothing going back on you no form of like uh like pushback and anything like you're not finding any flaws in them start wondering a little bit about that because for me that's a red flag like it's okay for people to have issues it's okay for people to be working on stuff it's okay for people to be exploring themselves 101 10 percent right but if like you're like hey you know what i like the color red they're like i like the color red you're like you know what i prefer blue i like blue like wait a minute wait a minute you know like what what, what are you where are you going with this you know so being able to go ahead and adjust that also another another key thing find out where the like when you when you talk about to your partner about anything find out what your guys's boundaries are right and that's what the first communication i have whenever going into a new relationship is like hey you know what these are my boundaries uh let's do check-ins every couple of months make sure that we're okay that you're doing okay so on and so forth because people that will always assimilate to whatever they like about you are never truly being themselves, right? Which is why oftentimes manipulators, once they get what they want, they can turn into some of the worst, nastiest individuals out there, or they can keep playing the role if they genuinely enjoy being there. What if there was them working on themselves, but you was too... Here's the thing is, working on yourself is never an excuse to be a, a an asshole, just straight up. Like you can work on yourself and still be empathetic, right? But someone literally turning from day to night is just someone that was straight up being manipulative. So just be careful on that. People that are too clingy, there's a lot of red flags that you have to watch out for. People that are way too clingy, way too immediately. People that can't take no for an answer. Um, people that change everything they like to fit your narrative. Uh, people that don't give you any pushback. You can go on and on and on. Like, there's a lot. I, I was hoping that I could just spot it and avoid it. Yeah, there's... There's a lot that can uh, that can go through with that. Sadly, I think the best thing for anyone to do is like again set up your boundaries as to what you're comfortable and not comfortable with. And honestly, like I don't know how to put this without without sounding bad. Um, communicate right if you're feeling if you're feeling uncomfy about a situation or something. Uh, ask for an outside perspective, right? It's okay to gain the input of other people without bringing in bias, right? Like, hey, you know what? This is sort of what's happening. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable about it. I just want to get an outside view. What do you guys think about this? You know, get someone that you trust, hopefully, not just random chatters, because chatters are going to fucking troll you, but someone that you genuinely trust. Anyway, I'm going to be thinking a little bit more about it, and I'll get back to you in a second. Good question, though. Void is a red flag. Mm -hmm. Actually true, Aqua. A lot of people don't know what red flags are immediately because sometimes you get into that honeymoon phase in a relationship and you put blinders on, right? Sadly, I hate to throw it out there this way. Uh, even though you can put on blinders, your friends won't, right? And it's not always saying like, hey, trust your friends or trust whatever, but quite literally like, when you're out interacting with people and if people are picking up on red flags, most people are able to pick up red flags way before you can, especially if you're dating them. Just because things may come off as unnatural, there may be a little bit of contention here and there. Granted, not everything is 100%. And of course, you shouldn't believe everything that comes out of everyone's mouth. But still, just things to be cognizant of because sometimes those blinders come on and they're way too strong. <laughs> どうしてお前や先生のような さあ、目覚めのビビ。そして答えろ。その答えを知ることが俺の使命だ。ようやく見つけました。松本。<笑> 
キューブマンなぜここお恥ずかしいですがアナログな人海戦術ですよ僕のボディキューブは2桁を超えますまだあなたですね当然マドイ12の3ボディ全てが彼女に追いつくまでこのまま演奏を続けなくてはブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラ Actually, here's an interesting question for all of you, and without me coming in with my psychological analysis on that, why do you guys think that is? Why do you guys think it's easier to notice red flags from your friend's relationship than it is from your own? Aside from bias, anyone care to,、uh, care to guess? Because we all have our own little blinders, our own bias, but aside from that, Why do you guys think that is? That it's a lot harder for you to be able to recognize something? Copium. Because I'm old and cynical, Aqua. I fucking feel you with that. Aqua. <laughs> Same, to be honest. But no, like. A lot of my relationships have been me tricking myself. There's a lot of self talk that end, does end up happening. But even with that self talk, what do you mean by you tricking yourself? You know? What, what does it mean for you to, be,、uh, to go through something like that? You know? What self talk do you have into? If it's you tricking yourself into liking someone, what does that mean for you? How many times have you gone through something like that? I think we've all gone through something like that where we literally talked ourselves into either going through with the relationship, continuing through with the relationship, avoiding the red flags, and so on and so forth. But what does it mean for you guys to be able to talk to yourself in that regard?、Um, I think it's because of experience spent with the other one is greater than one calling it out.、Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's to avoid the. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of ripping off the band aid. You know, like, you're like, oh, okay, like, I'm healing, you know, it's fine. And then you realize, wait a minute, no, this is actually causing me more harm.、Um, so on and so forth. It's because you can see the defects in other persons easier than yourself. True. It's also because of propinquity. You know, the more immediate you are in a situation, the harder it is for you to be able to zoom out and see sort of what's happening, you know.、Uh, in any situation, like, you know, if a friend tells you what they're going through, you're instantly able to tell, hey, you know what? This doesn't seem right because you're looking out, look, looking out, looking in, you know? It can be with a friendship, it can be with anything, yeah. It doesn't necessarily just have to be a romantic relationship. The closer you are to the source, the harder it's going to be to go ahead and,、uh, and ascertain sort of like a lot of the red flags、uh, situations there. I think I'm pretty good at reading someone's motives, but if I had the desire to. Aw, Aqua. True. Very true, though. Like, oftentimes. I'm so over it at this age. But here's the thing is like, even if you do find someone that meets all of your checklists, right?、Um, you know, let's say that、uh, your partner meets all of the, the requirements that you have for yourself, your standards and whatnot, that you're like, wow, this is such an amazing person. Oftentimes, because they meet these standards, we tend to even fall for them harder. And then they end up being like,、uh, Essentially, like, as I hate to put it this way, but like a fuck buddy or someone that genuinely just like wants sex out of the relationship or wants certain things out of the relationship that you can't necessarily give them all the time or care for when you're actually trying to settle for a long term relationship. So, 
yeah and, and it can hurt it can really really hurt uh in that so here's another question i'm gonna throw out to you guys while we're going through this and yes it is it, there's a reason i'm going through this specifically for vivi as you guys are getting older do you guys find yourself more scared of the thought of being alone and like you guys are going for more relationships or less relationships for that for that thing are you guys going for like the quantity of the like you know trying to find someone that genuinely matches your interest or the quality of like hey you know what they don't so i have to find the perfect one you know that so that that way i don't feel lonely or whatever the your cognitive uh you know schema is so throwing that out there to you guys because i'm curious everyone has different beliefs in that uh and you know i don't want to be alone is one of the most common schemas out there you know not a bad one just, just saying ビビじゃないって言ってるでしょ。会場にいる全ての歌姫たちが同じ使命のために稼働しているその不合理な演算60年ぶりに聞くとは思いませんでしたよ。本当に不合理な演算。Well, first off, great. I'm I'm glad that you came to that realization uh, that you're comfortable being alone right now. And if you don't mind me asking Aqua in this regard, what are you like, for example, in a partner, right? If you were to find an ideal partner or something like that, what does that look like for you? Like, you know, what what qualities do you want your partner to have? Not just a stereotypical, I want them to be good. Like, genuine qualities that you want something, someone of a partner to have, whether it's a pushback or having the ability to, like, you know, uh, emotionally check in or, you know, certain situations. This goes for everyone, by the way. If you guys were to make genuine friendships, romantic relationships, so on and so forth, uh, doesn't even have to be through sexual means itself. It can literally mean just deepening emotional context. What qualities do you want in that connection that you're looking for, you know? Pretty sick, though. That's pretty sick fighting team, yeah, I'm not gonna be honest. Bro, you got wrecked in your human life and now you're getting wrecked in your AI life. Like, that must fucking suck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you got fucking old in your human life, and you turn yourself an AI to beat someone, and you still get your ass on in artificial life. Poor dude. Oh. <laughs> right, TLC? あなたでは今の僕を上回れない。違う。違う。おひげの歌。その歌声はこんなものじゃない。なんでそんな顔をする。なぜ満ち足りている。
彼女の立場に焦がれ同じであれないのはなぜだオフィリアは何を思い歌い続けた Oh, 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 here we go. Pokemon trade. Here we go. It's coming. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. AI got his own request. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm So you're telling me, real quick, real quick. Yeah, this episode is definitely about toxic relationships, and that's why we've been talking a little bit about toxic relationships. But also, it's really good to have, like, sort of have a partner that's really understanding, right? And, like, genuinely caring and also open. For example, how many of you guys are comfortable with the silence that your partner brings, right? If you guys have ever been in a relationship or whatever, oftentimes, uh, you know, coming home or whatever and, like, not really saying anything, but knowing that your partner is there can be quite comfortable for a lot of people without having that constant interaction or constant thing, you know. But in situations like this, it's wild to think that this guy was literally triggered by the death of his、uh, piano teacher who was a robot to go against AI for the longest fucking time. It's like all of his switches, like his moral, like, you know, his whole belief system just shifted instantly because he didn't go through the proper process of grief, you know? Like, And same TLC. Antonio does sound a lot more like he wishes to be a Philia pass officer, exactly, rather than being able to maintain that friendship. But in situations like this, you know, like it, Vivi with your partner, right? It's like, what do they go ahead? What, what, what is the perfect relationship for them mean? Yeah, silence is important. But it's also like, hey, you know what? Like being able to talk, like, hey, I'm going to go to the other room. I got something to read. Hey, give me a little bit of space and not taking offense to that. Hey, I'm going to play. I'm going to stream today for four or five hours, or I got to stream today. I'll talk to you afterwards, whatever. Like being able to respect each other's boundaries. That's why it's huge. You know, it's important. But also, hey, you know what? A partner that is nice, that genuinely cares about you, that if you go out drinking, you know, you know that you're safe, that they're able to bring you home, or that like、uh, can get along with your friends. And even if they don't get along with your friends necessarily, But that they're there for you for whatever you need. That's important, guys. Uh, Sage, here's the thing is if it's not made completely obvious that it's a joke, They could be manipulating that to, to make it seem as though now you're in the wrong, which guilt tripping is another sign of a manipulation tactic.、Uh, no, that's totally fine. Yeah, I'm curious as to what the joke is. Thank you, Aqua. Same. That's why I'm like, yo, in case it's not completely obvious that it's a joke and that they've established with you what joking is, and someone comes at you and they make, like, for example, a racy joke, and then you're like, wait a minute, that's, what are you talking about? That's not, and then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you know, it, or like at first they said it and like it seemed real, and then like, it's a joke, it's a joke. Like, that's, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're, not, if you're not that close with someone and they're doing. Yeah, it should be exactly Aqua. Exactly. After that, it's, all, it's an issue. Aww. Honestly, let me walk that back. Honestly, I think it's a problem almost immediately if someone comes in and they say a racy joke without, or like any type of like big, big thing out there, like throwing something big out there. Uh, like, fuck it, I'll see a joke about Mexicans because I'm Mexican, right? Like, they're like, oh, yeah, like, did you jump over the wall? Like, you know, or something like that. Like, if someone said that to me, right, at first that I didn't know, and they're they like, and I called them out, I was like, what do you mean by that? 
Like, what, what are you talking about? Or like, you know, oh, well, he must have jumped over the wall. There's some joke, stupid joke like that, right? Because it's common where I live. I live near a border town. So, of course, it's going to be one of the, the most common jokes over here. If someone were to say something like that, I'd call them out. And if they're like, it's a joke, it's a joke. I'd be like, that's not funny. Like, yeah, dude, that's a, it, yeah, one time can be a huge problem, especially if they start walking it back and trying to justify it. Like, Dude, we weren't on that level yet. Like, we, I don't even know your inside jokes. Like, what, dude? Yeah, Sage, careful. Careful. Exactly, Aqua. Exactly. Oh. That's even worse, Sage. <laughs> well, what, what was it? Was that the joke or? What was the joke? この時、最後の機会があるとな。はぐらかしているように聞こえるか。いいえ。信じるわ。教えてくれ。ビビと同じ歌姫の<笑> Ninguenのように苦しんだのかそれともああ忘れるなああお前の存在が不幸にした人間がいたことを忘れる Okay, dude, first you fucking cry that your teacher saved a bunch of humans. Now you're saying there's a bunch of humans that got hurt because you existed? Were you? <laughs> no. あなたもわかってるんでしょ。私は消えるわ。ここ私にとっての最後のステージになる。あなたには呑気に見えるかもしれないけど。見えませんよ。あなたが使命に真摯でそこに僕との違いがないことなんてわかってる。だって僕はビ
Diva is gonna go off with this song, right? And then here, let, let, let me go. So Diva is gonna go away with this song, and then Vivi is probably gonna sing her last song at the end of the final episode. Guys, this is fucking cyclical writing here by Tape, I think. Oof. Oof. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> What's up, Rex? How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Well, Sage, there's a difference in that, and I think, like, it's a, even Rex and some of the others can agree with that. Like, the difference being, like, you know, if we've known each other for a long time, right? And say that we're already joking around and whatever. Hello there, General Kenobi! And, like, we've been joking around for one another, uh, with one another, and I sent you something like that, you know, like, we've already been, like, building up to being able to joke like that, it's one thing. But being able to, like, come in hot and just, like, extreme immaturity off of that, like, yeah, there's, there's, there, there's big differences there. There's, there's a huge difference with that. Like, one thing is, like, not being able to take a joke, any joke, even if, like, you're, so you're close with someone. Another thing is, like, quite literally someone just coming in and being, like, this is my opinion, now you have to take it. Like, yo. Yeah, that's why there's respect and boundaries. Yeah, big F in the chat for D.Va. That's, uh, that's a rough. This one hurts. Wow. <sighs> At least she went out with style. But dude, like... It's either give the performance of a lifetime or like Alright, that's just a preview for the next episode. So let me guess that this arc is pretty much done with and now we're back with Vivi instead of Diva. So now it's trying to find that middle ground, that ground in between and whatnot. We this this has been one of those shows where it quite literally takes you through a journey every single time you watch it. That's what I'm saying. Like I genuinely like Vivi because it's like a different song every arc, you know. A different like impacting song every arc um yeah wow what a what a fantastic what a fantastic show man